Hey everyone, welcome to Live Free and Tool On. On this channel, we love to test out tools, and today we have a very special test, something that I've never seen before that we're going to show you. We're going to be testing out three different circular saws. One is the brand new top of the line Ryobi 7 and a quarter inch circular saw. It is a brushless circular saw. Uh, this spins at 4300 RPMs per minute. It's brushless and it is the HP version. The next one is the Cobalt XTR 24 volt brushless circular saw. I gotta say, this is an amazing circular saw. The build quality of this is absolutely it's superb. The last one, this is the Milwaukee Fuel 6.5 inch circular saw. The reason why I put this in here is I understand that it's not a 7 and a quarter inch but I've been using this for years. It's been my favorite saw. The build quality is great. The durability has been amazing. So we're gonna throw this in there just to see how it stacks up. The RPMs for this are 5,000 RPMs per minute. I forgot to mention the RPMs for the Cobalt is 5,500 RPMs. They'll all be using four amp hour high capacity batteries and they're all high performing batteries as well. So this is Red Lithium. This is the HP battery. And this is called the Ultimate High Output 4.0 from the Cobalt. Now let's talk a little bit about the test. We're going to be using a circular saw slide, if you will. And the problem that I've always had when I see circular saw videos is that when someone just pushes a circular saw when you're doing a rip cut or a cross cut, it's really up to the input of the user. So however they're hard or however hard that they're going to push it, that's really going to determine you know, how far is it going to go? Is it going to fail prematurely? You don't have that uh, basic benchmark, if you will, of how much weight uh, that is being pushed. So you know how they're going to perform with the same input. I can tell you when I'm sawing with this, it feels completely different than when I saw with this or when I saw with this. The tools are just different. So you need to get a good benchmark. So I've created a sled and the best thing for me to do is let's just pull it over here and I'm going to show you. Okay, so here it is. This is the circular saw sled. I know it looks a little weird, but I'm going to make sense of that right now. So right here we actually have the sled itself. I have 15 pounds sitting on a piece of board and I have four wheels that are completely aligned. Right here, it's good to see um, on the bottom. And what this does, this has a string at the top of it here. And what it does is it keeps a constant pressure going down this ramp. Now up at the top, this is where we're gonna put wood at. So let me show you. So we'll put a piece of wood here. We'll take the circular saw. We're gonna tie the string onto it right here just like this. Now, it's very simple. So you just pull it up. You start your saw, you guide it, and that's all you do. You let it do all the work. And it pulls as fast as it can go. So you start up here, you just let it go. And you're really not doing anything except holding the button and make sure it stays on the track so that the blade doesn't bind up in the wood. So you have the constant pressure that's always on it. Now the reason why this looks the way that it does is because I want to have a center cut down the middle. So when I'm ripping this piece of wood, all I have to do is just let it run down the center so that the weights doesn't fall off any side. Well, you're probably asking, what angle is that going at? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to take my true true angle finder. I'm going to put it on the floor in here. The floor is level. This is at a 25 degree slope with 15 pounds on rollers, so you don't have a lot of friction there. So the only way that I can actually make this work and it be equal is if I use this little saw guide. This is a universal saw guide. You can buy these at Home Depot. You may even be able to buy them at most hardware stores. But what this does, it goes onto the end right here of a circular saw and it slides right in. Oops, sorry. Right here. And what this does is whenever you're ripping wood, you can set your depth adjustment and then you can really rip wood really quickly. 
and that helps you out, especially when you're ripping a lot of pieces of wood, and you get straight lines, but most importantly, the uniformity is there. So for this uh, particular test, that's what we want. We want that uniformity to stay intact. So we're gonna use this. Uh, first, I'll start the saw. I'll hold the tip of this just to make sure it stays in line and we don't have any type of blade binding going down the wood. And then I'll just release and I will let the weight pull everything. I'm not gonna push this. I'm not gonna pull on it. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna make sure it stays in line and I'm holding the power button down. The first test I'm going to do, we're gonna take two one by eight and they're gonna be screwed together uh, pieces of rough cut pine wood. We're gonna screw them together and we're just gonna rip them down. That's gonna be a four foot section each. That's gonna be our typical duty type of rip. The next cut that we're gonna do, we're gonna do a two by eight pressure treated piece of wood. That's gonna be a three foot rip. Start here, go straight down, see which one we, how it goes. And then our last cut on the rip here, or at least on the rip slide or the circ slide, I haven't really named it yet, but we're gonna get there. <laughs> Uh, we're going to do a one by six inch piece of MDF, and that's going to be our speed cut. I want to see how fast we can really cut into these pieces of wood. And then what I really want to do, I'm going to show the big difference. So I'm going to take a five foot piece of uh, two by eight pressure treated pieces of wood, and and I'm going to do that one by feeling. So I'm going to press it as you know as hard as I can until I I feel the motor bogging down and then we're gonna see how all the results stack up against each other. One thing I forgot to mention, let's talk about it before we get into the test. I am using brand new blades for all of these. These are the, these are the Diablo 24 tooth carbide tipped blades. These are framing blades. So I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit nervous when I was starting this test out. This is something I've never seen before, and to be honest with you, it's not an easy test to do, but if you do it right, it really does give you some interesting results. If we look at that first test, you're going to notice that the cobalt came in last. You had Ryobi first, you had Milwaukee second, and you had cobalt last. On the uh, 2x8, the pressure treated 2x8, um, you had a tie. So one and two was Ryobi and Milwaukee, and then last again was the Cobalt. And then if we take a look at the speed cut, and that's something that I thought would be super easy, Ryobi is number one, Milwaukee is two, and Cobalt is number three. Now for the last test. This is the test that, but it's how the tool feels. And if you use tools a lot, you know how it feels. You know when it's bogging down, we need to slow down so it can spin up, get the torque back up, and start cutting the wood. It's very interesting that the cobalt killed the rest of these two. So these two tied and cobalt won. Now, I can say about the cobalt, it is so fast. At 5,500 RPMs, this is a very, very fast, uh, especially for a cordless saw. Um, and then if it's used right in the right hands, it is an amazing tool. This has a lot of safeties built into the motor itself. So when it feels a lot of that friction and you're not able to release a little bit when you feel the motor bogging, it's gonna cut out. And that's what it did on almost on all the tests. It cut out. Even on the last test, when I was pushing it with my hands, it cut out, but I was able to release when I felt it and continue on and it still beat the rest of them. Now the funny thing also about this test that was revealed is that the Ryobi and that the Milwaukee being that this is 5,000 RPMs and this is 4,300 RPMs, being that this is seven and a quarter, and being that this is a six and a half, they're neck and neck. So I wouldn't have really thought that. I thought that this would have kind of beat this, but this was keeping up just fine. 
and they're they, I think that they perform the same. The big difference you're going to notice is that with a seven and a quarter inch blade, that this is going to go deeper. So you're going to get better cuts. So I hope that this video helped somebody out there. I hope that you found it enjoyable, entertaining. And if you have a better way to test this tool or, or you've seen a better way to test a circular saw that really sets an equal test and pressure on the blades themselves, or at least input from the user, please let me know. I'd love to see the links. I'd love to see you try your own test out there. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.